Okay, so let's go back down to the bottom painting. So the next step we need to do is we need to do our mid-ground area. So they see this kind of lightish yellow color. That's what we're looking for. So it's kind of a light yellow color and it's fading into, as it's getting closer to the foreground and closer to you as a viewer, you start seeing things, you know, more clearly as far as detail, but also the, the value of the grass itself. So out here, it's a little bit more kind of in the plains, kind of like that dry grass look um, color, kind of like that tannish yellowish color. And as it's coming here, it's getting a little bit more lush, getting when it gets, especially when it gets closer to the river, the water source, right? Um, but even a little bit more so just as it's getting closer to help create that depth with it. Okay. So we're going to look for, um, so we're going to get a new palette or a new um, area over here. Oh, looks like mine was a little bit dirty. I'm going to get all that out of there real quick because I don't want that dark color with this. So now I'm going to use my paper towel. Use my paper towel to soak that, clean that out. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay, so now um, in order to create that kind of light yellow, we definitely want to start with our base of yellow. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this and bring it over here. Okay, that'll probably be good. Let's wash the brush. Now, um, I added a tiny bit of, um, I think I added a tiny bit of brown to this. If I remember correctly to get that color. So kind of just put a tiny bit. You don't like really like a tiny bit, not a lot. So kind of put it here and then bring it in. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So then bring that over into it. And you should be getting kind of a tannish, yellowish, brownish color. A little bit more water. And I'm going to pull a little bit of that yellow. More yellow. If you get too much brown, you can either add more yellow, add more yellow to kind of help balance it back out towards more towards the yellow side because the brown that's in these palettes are more of a, I have a red base to them. So it's kind of that reddish uh, burnt sienna color and you don't really want it to be orange. So just be careful with that. So if it's looking more like that, add more yellow to counteract it. I'm not checking on my paper towel. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. We'll test it. And if I'm not happy that I can always add more and go back over it. So, okay. So I'm going to go start with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, you could use a flat here if you wanted to, the flat brush, but as I've told y'all, I'm quite partial to this round brush. Okay, so this is pretty light. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to end up adding another layer to this because it's so light. You guys can probably barely even see it on the camera. So. But what I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing that I did up here in the ocean. So I'm just letting it dance around. I'm leaving some areas that are a little bit lighter, um, the white of the paper even, because the sun is still, you know, shining down on things and creating those highlights and shadows. So um, a lot of this, though, will end up being, you know, covered by trees anyway, and or, you know, shrubbery or trees or grass or whatever. But you can kind of see how I've left some areas lighter and darker than others. So. Okay, yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow from my stockpile over here. And maybe even a tiny bit, teeny tiny bit. Ooh, I don't know if I want to do, I don't think I want to do that color, do I? Yeah, actually that did work out well. Okay, I added a teeny tiny bit of that green that we had from the mountains to it. I mean, literally a teeny tiny, not a lot, because you don't want to turn it gray. Um, and then that kind of... There's a little bit more. So again, just let your paint, paintbrush dance around, be expressive, fluid, let it flow. Okay. And then as you can see in this one, so I've actually um, created, I've blended these. So as I'm doing this one, I just turned, started getting some of the green and then kind of just started, started uh, blending it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that color that I'd use from the, uh, the mountains and I'm going to add a bit more yellow to it to create um well water first because i was about out of water or about out of it totally 
and then I'm going to get some of this yellow and I'm going to bring some of that in to get it a little bit more of a green color because I kind of want to get rid of that neutral, that grayish tone that it had, brighten it up a little bit with a little bit of, of yellow. And what I'm doing is I'm actually contaminating my yellow right now, but it's going to end up being used here in a little bit, probably for our grass. So let's be okay. Okay, so yeah, I think that'll be good. And you can change this color. I mean, you don't, you know, you don't typically want like a Kelly green for your grass. Um, it can be whatever green you want. Just, you know, it just needs to make it look like as long as our mind reads it as grass, then it's up to you. That's where the artistic license comes in at. You can choose the color palette, the colors that are used as you see fit. So I kind of go back into that yellow a little bit just to kind of create again so that it kind of just dissipates. It kind of blend together and it makes it look like it's getting further away. And I'll bring some over here to the other side. And this is kind of, you know, in the dead of summer is whenever this is kind of being placed or, you know, the, the time period. So, you know, you do typically in, you know, in Colorado, you do have that kind of more of that dead grass look um, in the plains, depending obviously where you're at. But just like here in, in Texas, like we are, you definitely have a lot of dead looking grass, right? <laughs> so, so again, though, I'm letting um, some areas of the white of the paper kind of show through because, again, it creates that idea that there is the sun hitting that. Okay. So just make sure that you get um, all the way down to your tape here, though, in the front so that you'll have a border whenever it comes time to it. Just make sure you get that good. Okay, so that for mid-ground foreground is, has its first coat. I may end up coming back and putting another coat on there, uh, especially the foreground because it's still quite light. And remember, the foreground needs to be the darkest, right? So um, we'll let that dry, though, and we're going to come back up here. My, my, my water is good and dry, so I'm going to go ahead and do my sand now. We're still going to do another coat on the water, but for now I want to get this in here so that then that last coat is going to be the final one, okay? So, um... Let me see. So this orange area that I had the orange, I'm actually going to bring that over because sand kind of has an orangey base. I may end up regretting this because this is quite orangey, but let's see. This is where experimentation and your knowledge of color theory comes in. But I'm seeing if you can do it. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, then obviously you can just, you know, wipe it out with a paper towel and start over. I'm going to add a tiny bit of, ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> may end up having to pull some of that out. I'm going to bring this over because that green is going to neutralize a little bit of that red. There we go. That's not too bad. So sand is, you know, that kind of tan, tan color, depending on where you're at in the world. There's also black sand beaches. Okay. Add more water because it was a little bit too brown. So I want it to be more of a tan, light tan. You can check it on there. I think that'll be about perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here and put a layer on here. So I'm going to come right up to the water, but again, I'm kind of letting, again, my, pen, my paintbrush kind of dance, um, kind of working in there and kind of getting in those areas that like might have some white left um, because you do want to have that, you know, a, a definite line, but at the same time, you're going to end up wanting your, your, water your water to look like it's on top of your sand not your sand on top of your water so just be careful with um your brush as you're getting close and then of course get all the way down to the bottom of your paper so that you have that nice border that ends up being nice and straight when we take the tape off and then otherwise it's just a matter of i'm kind of adding a little bit more for color you could um, leave this kind of a lighter color if you wanted to or you can come in and add more layers to make it a little darker. That's kind of what I'm doing. It's kind of adding a little bit more because it's kind of drying as I'm putting it on here. So there we go. Okay, that's about the, the load that it can take as far as water goes. So I'll leave it there for the moment. I think I actually might be okay. Well, no, I might do a little. I may do one more layer. We'll see. Uh, once it dries, because it's going to dry a little bit of a different color. So, okay, so then I'm going to fill 
this is dry enough for me to be able to keep working on this. If yours, again, if yours has any kind of sheen to it, when you look at it at an angle on the side, then it's not ready yet because it will mushroom out if you do that. So just make sure that it's, it's, it might, mine's a little bit cold to the touch still, but it's dry enough that I can come back and go through with it. It's not super cold to the touch. It's just a tiny bit. And again, that's the kind of stuff that with practice, that's when you start learning like where your uh, limits are as far as that goes, as far as can I paint on it again or not. Okay, so what I'm first going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of that yellow um, to this back here. I think. Uh, is that the color? That was the color I used, wasn't it? I think it was, right? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add another layer. And even if it, you know, if you went over it, it's fine. It's just, we're just kind of creating the idea of grass here. The kind of, you know, sun baked grass, bringing that down into the green just real quickly, but putting just a thin coat, like thin, but like the color. Like I said, a lot of this will end up being covered with trees anyway, but you do want your color of your ground to be correct before you start doing that. Because there's once you start putting trees and vegetation, there's no going back to make it look like it's correct. Because then you'd be having to go around it and watercolor doesn't work like that or work well. Okay, let's see. Now we're going to get some of that green. So it's this color, right? And we're just going to add a wee bit more. Just to kind of push those values a little bit darker. Kind of keeping in mind where those areas where we, you know, leaving some darker, darker areas, leaving some lighter areas. Going right up to your water, your uh, river. Okay, just checking. I think that's going to be for my mine is mine's going to be dry enough to to do another layer on the sand real quickly. But again, if yours is wet, still has a sheen to it, then don't don't do it yet. Let it dry a little bit longer. Okay, so this is just adding one layer. Okay, so um, I just did a little bit, very thin layer here. So this is all pretty much dry, like immediately around my river is dry enough to be able to do my river real quick, okay? So then I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to come up here, and we're going to put our last layer on um, the, the water, okay? And then that one will be finished, and then we'll just have a little bit more to do with this one. Okay, so let's see. Let's add water. I need some more blue. Some more water to your blue if you need more. Now, this water, um, it will be reflecting your sky. So that's the reason that we're using a, a blue. However, most rivers and streams are not blue, like pretty blue, right? Especially anything compared to the ocean. Some oceans, anyway. Not quite so much Galveston, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, if you wanted to make that like the Caribbean, then you probably would have done more of a turquoise color. But um, for this, we just want it to be a light so that it looks like it's um, reflecting the sky, because that is what it, like with the example that I did, you can see that it's a light blue, but it's not as dark as the sky or as dark as my ocean up there. So it's kind of like the idea of it, and then I put some of the white in there, to, again, to show kind of like clouds or like the light hitting it. Um, but you could also turn this into kind of like a, like a muddy, kind of a muddy blue or muddy brown color, you know, um, because typically rivers and streams are 
more of a muddy color. Not all of them, but it just, you know. Or if you wanted to do, make it look like you could see through it, like if the water was clear and you would see the bottom, which would probably be either rocks or mud. If you really wanted to get that detailed with it, you could. We're not, we're just making this quick as a practice one, but you could do that. Okay, so let's see. Okay, I think that's going to be good. So I've kind of just mixed that. So now what I'm going to do is I, um, a little bit too much on my brush. Make sure you don't have too much water because you are just doing a teeny tiny bit or if you feel like you want to start over here just to make sure you can and then bring this into this little bitty area there using just the tip of your brush and then start using the side of it again. Okay, and then you're just going to come down. Now when you start getting to the area where it's starting to open up a little bit, this is where I start doing like I did up here on the ocean. So start kind of letting your, your paintbrush kind of dance and kind of create every once in a while touch the surface and not, but you're still following um, the shape of the river, but you're not necessarily putting paint down everywhere. It kind of creates more of, like I said, this, this the reflection in the sky, the clouds, and also kind of like the water's moving. It kind of gives it movement. Okay, so something kind of like that. So um, I'll do just a tiny bit more just to make it a little bit darker because it's kind of light. But you, like I said, you can make yours as light or dark as you want. And also creating, you know, some depth in there by giving some areas a little bit darker, some lighter, some of that mid-tone. Just make sure that you're, we're down here by your tape, that you have solidity down there and it doesn't just turn into white or that'll look funny and it'll blend in with your border. And make sure you go right up to your edge. Or well, actually you can leave a little bit because in this one I'll show you guys. So I put a little bit of brown in here. We're going to make like the bank of the, the, the river. And that's what's going to make it look like it's grounded rather than just floating in the sky. Or help make it anyway. Give it a little bit more dimension and depth. So okay, good deal. So now let's come up here and we're going to add um, another layer onto this ocean and be done with that painting. I'm going to get a little bit more because I, ooh, that's a lot. Because I, uh, I want it to be a bit darker. See, that's a lot. Add more water. Just remember, add more water if you want it to be lighter. Okay, I think that might be good. If not, I'll add a little bit more. Okay, so um, we're going to start at the back of the ocean. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. And again, just letting your paintbrush dance. Kind of thinking about the areas where you've already darkened it some, but also left some areas. This one, ooh, looks like there's some oil on the on the paper there. Um, didn't trying to resist the water hitting it. So you don't want to have like this was a really large area white. You don't really want to have quite that much because this is a little bit out there. Like waves are typically straight, right? So you don't want to have too big of a like a, a circular type shape or else then it's going to be take on the appearance of like, I don't know, maybe like a rock or something out in the ocean. Unless, of course, you want that. But for the most part, you kind of want to keep them more like, um, which is why I'm going back and forth too. It's because it helps you create those ideas of the skinny white, uh, white caps of the waves. Okay, and then so now I'm going to kind of come back in, Oops, a little too much, and we're going to kind of play with the overlap. Came over a little too far. So paint, clean paintbrush, and wiping that off. I don't want that to turn green. Um, okay, so let's see. Let me get that again. Move that around. Okay, kind of creating using just the tip of your brush and creating that kind of scumbling effect. To 
to kind of make it look like the waves or that it's kind of bubbling up and kind of coming up. So here's where you kind of can add a little bit more depth to it by leaving some areas that have a little bit darker. And you could also create a defined line of the water's edge of where it's like coming up on the beach. You don't want to necessarily do these little fuzzy um, things all along the whole thing. You kind of like, so I'm only doing it kind of here and a little bit into there and a little bit there, but leaving some area or else it'll look, again, it'll look too forced. So just create an idea of it here and there, and then the mind reads it as, as um, the ocean water. In fact, I'm kind of trying to make these look a little bit more like like that water's kind of rolling over itself. It doesn't have a lot of bubbles or anything yet, but it's got that line. Okay. So kind of giving that a little bit of a grounding. That's why I kind of went into the beach a little bit with it. And you're kind of creating that, kind of creating that little brownish greenish kind of almost color. But what it's doing is it's giving it a little bit of a shadow of where that water, like the thickness of the water is on top of the beach and kind of grounds it, which is what we'll do this in a minute whenever we do our, um, our river also. Okay, let's see, where'd we leave off? So we got our river done down here. I'm happy with it. So the next step is going to be, uh, ooh, you know what, I'm seeing that it's going under. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Oh, yep, it sure did. As long as yours is not still like fluidly wet up here, you can take your tape off. Now, you can see that I've got some leak through that happened. Hopefully you don't. Now, what I could do is I could leave this and they kind of look like trees, to be honest. So this could be like an island out there. So that's one thing you could do. Or you can do what I'm doing here, which may or may not work like I want it to, since this is green. We do not want green in our sunset or on our, oh, yeah. Okay, so get some clean water using your clean water cup and kind of scrub out that color and then kind of blend in your yellow again so that it kind of like covers it up in a sense. Just be careful because if any of your blue is still wet, you might get some of that on there. What we could do too, just to make this a little bit more interesting, I can show you all how to fix that. Okay, let's do that. Change of plans a little bit. Let me see. Um, so I'm going to add, because the fact that this is the sun is directly behind it, the stuff that would be here, like these trees, if these are going to turn into trees, would be silhouetted. But I don't, this paintbrush is going to be too big. So that's when we switch to a tiny little paintbrush. I'm going to get a tiny bit of... Um, A tiny bit of black, but then I'm also going to pull a little bit of this blue over here because I don't want it to be a harsh black, like pure black, because that's just, just too harsh. So I'm bringing over a little bit of that to kind of pull that down a little bit. And then what I can do is I can come over here. Just be careful. If anything's wet down here, don't put your hand on it. But then you're kind of just turning this into little silhouettes. And we could also just leave those in there, the ones that I had taken out. Add them back to it. So if it's black like this, it's a different color than your sky, then it's going to be, our minds are going to read it as, oh, that's like a little island over there. Or maybe it's a little city or it could be whatever you want it to be. But the main thing, like I said, is keeping in mind that it's, it would be silhouetted, so it needs to be dark because the sun's behind it, your light source is behind it. You can even 
and create a little one with our ellen something like this okay there we go and that's how you turn a mistake into a masterpiece okay so we'll let that dry and then that painting is now officially done if you wanted to come back and add you know like some palm trees and that sort of stuff you could do that but for the sake of time i'm not going to do that just because i want to focus on getting this one so that you guys can see you can see there's a bit more left on this one so okay so speaking of so we've got everything all the base stuff done now now we're going to start adding in the detail well kind of writing in the trees the foliage but we're going to start back here at the horizon line and as you can see these are literally let me get that close so you can see it these are literally um just the idea it's just little quick paintbrush strokes they're not um they're not actual trees that i'm going through drawing i'm just going to let my paintbrush dance so let me get my um so i use this the the round brush for this um, if you have a smaller round brush handy, that might be better. Um, I mean, I use this brush for almost everything, except for, you know, teeny tiny little details. Um, so if you're comfortable with it by this point and kind of know how it works, you can use it. If you want to get a smaller one, you can. It's up to you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this one, though. So, okay. So now what we're going to be doing is, so now we need to make that color of that kind of that bluish green color for the tree. So I'm, I'm done with this blue now, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it over into, um, into this color where we had already had our bluish green color. And I'm looking for, you know, the color of essentially, so these, these trees are going to be far in the background back here by these tree, by these mountains, right? So they're not going to be the like pure green pine tree color that you would see up here because you, again, you have atmospheric perspective happening and it's going to end up kind of looking more like, um, kind of like, a bluish green color so that's what I'm over here kind of making so kind of making a bluish green let's see I'm running out of space here okay so it's going to be very similar to your mountain color but it needs to be a little bit darker so like looking at that that's pretty much the same color as that front mountain so I need to add more blue because I need to make it a little bit darker I don't want it to necessarily blend in with the mountain however it should be something similar enough to it because those are also trees on the mountain and these are just right in front of them. So our eyes would see them as almost the same color. Okay, I think that might be good. I may end up needing to make it a little bit darker, but we'll see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, yeah, no, it's the same color. So you can test it like that, like put it right next to it and see if it, or a little bit over into that mountain and see if it's standing up against it or not. If it's not, then add a little bit more blue to it to make it a bit, a little bit darker. Okay, that's not too bad. So um, essentially what I'm doing is, again, I'm using only the tip of my brush, barely any pressure, but I'm kind of just letting it dance and I'm kind of creating the idea of trees. So every once in a while, you know, having a stroke upwards that looks like the top of a pine, pine tree. Um, and otherwise I'm kind of just going along here and every once in a while I'm letting some areas of the, the background, like the, the grass show through so that then it ends up looking like that there's some space in between them, right? So that it's not just a straight, you know, solid line of the same shape. You want it to look like it has some variety to it. And then our minds will read it as trees because it wants to make sense of everything that it's seeing. So it puts it into these categories. So you don't have to go all the way to the river's edge. In fact, it's kind of a nice idea to leave a little space like open space so that it almost looks more like, you know, like a valley that's open and you know, that you'd be able to walk down a trail or something. I don't know. So now going on to the other side. If your um, trees are looking like they're getting too thick, it might be because you have too much water, like mine are kind of doing that. I have a little bit too much water. Let me pull some off. Um, so if that happens, just kind of dab your paintbrush onto your paper towel. Get rid of some of that excess water. Again, I'm kind of just letting it dance every once in a while, making the idea that there is the top of a pine tree there. Kind of bringing these over. Some of these will be kind of covered up anyway with another layer or some other like free standing trees. 
Or obviously you could put, if you wanted to make this entire thing, you know, forested, you could. I'm not just, again, for the sake of time and to have some open areas that's similar to the example, but I'm gonna just do something like that. Okay, so we need to let that layer dry because um, if we start again on the single ones, it's just gonna run into it. <laughs> 